You are listening to the Waking Up to Purpose podcast with Lily Badcock in association with lilybadcock.com. What if every challenge you've ever faced was for a purpose? What if every perceived failure was in fact you stepping ever closer to the life you were born to live? I'm Lily Badcock, and I'm here to let you know that you were born with a divine purpose in your heart. And you're here because you know that's true. The process of awakening can be tough. Fired up and inspired one minute and then overwhelmed and lost the next. I've created this podcast to share with you every aspect of my own journey to purpose, as well as the stories of others who have walked the same path. Fear and doubt can place a lot of uncertainty in our minds, but here's what's true. You are needed. Your story matters. Wake up. Rise up. Together we can. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome back. This is episode four of the Waking Up to Purpose podcast. Thank you for being here. And this week I wanted to speak about something that's been a bit of a theme for me. Uh, this week because I do believe that we're all connected and I feel like the things that we personally face and struggle with are usually being faced and struggled with on a collective basis and I think the mistake a lot of us make is when we are faced with challenge or some kind of struggle we quite often will take that as a sign that we're going in the wrong direction So this is super relevant to waking up to purpose, living a life of purpose, because I think what we think a lot of the time, whether consciously or subconsciously, is that it has to look a certain way. And I know for me, over the years, I have looked at other people in the industry who are speaking about things, you know, that I like to speak about, and I have maybe told myself that they seem to have all their all their ducks in a row and that you know they've got it all together and so that therefore that maybe makes them better than me right and it's just not the case I think there is actually magic to be found in the things that we're struggling with but we have to be willing to first of all believe that that's the case So I want to open this episode by saying, if you're listening to this right now, and if you've had a bit of a week of it, or even a day of it, or like, however, whenever this podcast is reaching you, if you've been in any kind of resistant energy, or any kind of negative energy around where you're at in your life, where you think you should be versus where you perceive that you are, if you've had one of those weeks where the weight of the world seems to be on your shoulders, then this is for you. (laughs) So there's been a really profound thing that's happened this morning. So once a month, I meet virtually with my vocal coach. Now, for those of you that are new to me, uh, for those of you that haven't been listening to this podcast for long, or that haven't listened to the previous podcast, The Confidence Academy, you may or may not know that my background is in singing. So I have always loved to sing. It's always been a source of great joy for me, or at least it was up until a point, and I'm going to share what happened. Um, And if you aren't new to me, you'll have heard this story before, so sorry to be repetitive, but it's so relevant for now. There are so many pieces that I want to bring together. And so once a month I meet with my vocal coach, um, shout out to Chris Johnson, he's absolutely incredible, he actually has a podcast of his own called The Naked Vocalist, so for anyone listening who is into singing um, and into voice or anything like that, go and check out The Naked Vocalist, because it's very, very good, it's absolutely hilarious, apart from anything else, but very, very informative as well. Um, and here's the thing, right, I, I decided I was going to have these regular lessons with Chris, back in January, after suffering with my voice, if I'm honest, for years. So part of my story, but it's all part of my awakening, actually. And like I say, there are so many parts that all come together. And it's so serendipitous that this is coming out today. 
So I, I'm so excited to even get into it. I don't even know where to begin. But anyway, let me try. So ever since I can remember, singing has been a source of joy for me, something that I've loved to do. It was the one area of my life where I never questioned myself. It was the one thing I just knew I was good at. And it actually didn't matter about anyone else's opinion because it was always enough for me, you know? So looking back now from from my adult critical mind, I could definitely look back and go, well, you weren't as good as you thought you were. But that's kind of not the point. The point was for many, many years, right up until, oh, when would it have been? 2000 and... I would say 2013. So right up until 2013, singing was something that I loved to do. It was something that empowered me. It was something I was confident doing. It was the one thing that that was my thing, right? So in all other areas of life where I questioned whether, you know, I could really fit in or whether when I questioned whether I was really any good, singing was always my go-to. It was always the thing I felt I could do. It was always a release for me. I would spend hours just shut in my room singing songs and, you know, working on my voice but not from any place of needing to be anything it was from sheer joy right and then in 2013 I lost my voice completely completely for about three weeks um I could barely speak let alone sing um it came off the back for a start I'd had my children like Freddie had been born the December just before that so this was he was maybe about six months old when this happened and Louis would have been about a year and a half because they were born very close together and on top of that one acquaintance of mine it wasn't someone I knew super well but it, it was like a new friend in my life um, who had been diagnosed with cancer, very sadly lost his fight in the March of that year. And that same year, one of my very best friends was given a diagnosis of cancer as well. And what I found happening to me over a period of time was basically a loss of faith. I was looking at the world in a different way. I was watching my friend who previously had been living such an amazing life and was so happy and healthy. And I watched her go from that to someone who was constantly in and out of hospital and constantly had to monitor everything about her life and everything just changed. And I think I'd always had this just this blasé kind of approach to what life was supposed to be like. I'd, I'd always had this belief that it was just supposed to be easy. And it wasn't even that I thought it was supposed to be easy. I just believed it was. So when I saw these two people, they were both larger than life. They were both living awesome lives. To watch these two people have their entire life changed. And obviously in the case of the guy, he lost his life. Um, and to watch it change so drastically, it really aligned me with a lot of fear and a lot of questions. And so everything I had come to believe in growing up just fell by the wayside. And I felt like I couldn't trust it anymore. And in losing my connection to that, I lost the connection to myself as well. And so began this this journey of trying to find my way back to alignment. Now, the reason that singing is so relevant with this is because around that time was when I lost my voice. And I will say, I still don't know if I lost my voice because of what happened. I don't know if it was a result of that. Um, and because, you know, that was also the same time that my anxiety was diagnosed. So I still don't know if the voice loss was as a result of the anxiety or if the anxiety occurred because I'd lost my voice. It's hard to know. I don't think I'll ever know. It was all, it all came at once. But for me, I really lost the ability to, to speak. And at the time, I just was looking at a surface level and thinking, well, you know, I've had a baby, I'm tired. I was also teaching a lot of hours at the time um, and large groups of children as well. So I was definitely on a physical level, 
I was pushing the boundaries of what my body found acceptable and able to cope with. Um, but I came to realise over time that there was something much bigger going on. It was something very spiritual for me. It was actually a yoga teacher um, who suggested looking into chakras. And I'd never heard of what a chakra was at the time. But she said, if, you're, if you continually lose your voice then there may be a blockage in the throat chakra. And I was like, what the hell's a throat chakra? <laughs> so I had to look into chakras and I'm not a chakra expert by any means, but I now, I fully understand the connection now between not speaking truth, not living in alignment and then physically being unable to do that, right? I also 100% believe that there is a way that our body slows us down when we're not getting the message. And I do think there was a bit of that as well. So I think at a time when I should have been taking some time, first of all, to grieve because, you know, one a new friend of mine had lost his life. Um, I also should have taken the time to process the news I'd been given about my best friend. Um, but instead, um, I didn't do that. I just put the shutters up and just went head down as fast as possible in a forward motion to just try and get through life. I wanted to get back to, I don't even know where I was trying to get back to. So all of that to say that from that moment forward, my voice and my spirituality were obviously linked. I actually think it's true to say they've always been linked and I think it's true for you too. But that was the point I started to realise, right? And I continued to teach singing because I had to work. And it was at that point that I started to realise there was a real correlation between the lessons I was teaching people in singing and the life lessons I was learning for myself. And I started to make this connection that singing could be a way to connect people to their true soul, their true identity, and could be a way to allow them to alleviate some of the resistance, some of the negativity and some of the worry and the fear and the anxiety. And so I started to make that connection and I started bringing it into my work. And for those of you that have followed me for a while, you'll know that I went from calling myself a vocal coach to being a confidence coach. But singing was always the vehicle that I used. So anyway, why this is relevant today is because I had a singing lesson with my vocal coach, as I said. And this week for me has been one of resistant feelings, a lot of questioning, a lot of second guessing. I don't think it's any accident that this has come right after the launch of this podcast, because this podcast actually um, symbolises, I was searching for the word, it symbolises the work that I know I'm here to do. By me putting this podcast out in the world, I am declaring to everyone and the universe and to myself that I know who I am, that I love who I am and that I'm ready to be seen and heard in all my glory. There's no hiding behind anything. So I don't think it's an accident that in the week that followed the release of this podcast, I hit a wall of resistance and a wall of questions around what I was worthy of and what I could or shouldn't do. And it's really been a roller coaster this week. Thankfully, I know not to take that at face value. And that is definitely something I've learned because there would have been a time where that would have just set me on my, uh, on my ass and I wouldn't have been able to move forward. I now know that there is a lesson to be learned. I know that there's something to be seen. And as I said at the start of this podcast, I believe if I'm feeling it, then collectively it's being felt, right? So this is this is for anyone who at any point, whether recently or otherwise, has questioned their place in the world, has questioned their ability to do what they feel led to do. Um, and anyone who has questioned their value and their worth. So this morning when I got on this call with this singing teacher, of course, it was completely aligned and we started talking about the, well, actually something he said to me was that chaos is great. He identified in me, he said, chaos works for you. This was so profound because all week I've been feeling chaotic and telling myself that that's wrong. 
all week I've been, you know, feeling completely not organized <laughs> and telling myself that that's not good enough. Even as I'm recording this podcast, I'm telling myself in my head, I can hear it. I can tell, I'm telling myself in my head that it's not easy to follow, that I should have written bullet points. As you, as you know, I don't, I don't really plan these episodes. I just put the microphone on and I speak and that's it. And so the whole theme this week has been how chaotic I am, how unorganised I am. And then I've been telling myself that because I'm that way, I can't get to wherever it is I want to get to. I've been looking at people who are seemingly less disorganised and more structured. And I've been telling myself that they are further along because of that. And that is some next level bullshit, you guys. It's some next level bullshit. That is going to be what keeps you stuck. So my message to you and to myself is to embrace all that you are, even the chaos. You know, I got on that singing lesson and it was just a singing lesson. You know, Chris is not a spiritual mentor that he knows of. I I actually happen to believe that's exactly what he is but he doesn't put that on his website. (laughs) Like on the website, it's just, I'll teach you how to sing and I'll get, I'll rehabilitate your voice, right? That's what he does. But it goes much deeper than that. And I feel like it's such a gift today that I've been reminded of my work and I've been reminded that I was onto something and it doesn't matter if it's chaotic. It doesn't matter if I can't see how it all plays out. I can just trust that the path I was on was the right one. So I really hope that this message lands with you as well. Which path have you been ambling down maybe for years and then constantly pulling yourself off of it because you've been telling yourself that it doesn't look right or it should be a a certain way or that, you know, so-and-so is doing it different or whatever. What is the thing in your life that you have been led to that maybe you've been second guessing, that maybe you've been telling yourself isn't enough. This is your reminder. This is your wake up call. And I wanted to speak on this connection to soul. Your connection to soul is easy. It's the thing that lights you up. I'm sure I've said this already in an episode. I'm probably going to say it a million times more until it goes in. It gets to be flow based. It gets to be easy you don't need to second guess it. The most profound thing that came up in my lesson today was we were doing a load of physical exercises with the jaw. So not even singing at all. It was all jaw manipulation and we were, you know, moving the tongue and it was actually around the swallow thing. So, you know, when we swallow as a human, there's a bunch of stuff that happens. And so he was teaching me how that can get out of alignment. And after doing those exercises, he then asked me to sing my song again and everything just felt easier. And I said to him, I feel like this is my voice again. At at no point did I have to, at no point did I feel like I had to do anything on top of the function of singing. Am I making any sense at all? So when singing felt hard, so after I lost my voice and in the years it's been since trying to get it back, there was always this element of needing to do something there was always this element of it won't work if I don't do xyz you know shaping the vowels properly breathing correctly um moving the tongue correctly there are definitely things you can do that will help but the point is singing as in life is supposed to be easy it's supposed to be flow you're not supposed to have to think about every little thing the same way as we are not supposed to think about every little thing And something Chris said to me today was, when you get into that thought process of, I have to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this, this," you overwhelm your brain and then you just stop functioning. You can't do the simple function of singing or life because you're so bogged down with all the things you think you should be doing rather than just trusting in the instrument that you've been given, rather trusting in the life path that you've been given. Can you see these parallels? And so the beauty of the lesson today was it was just it was just the perfect reminder that I needed. It was the perfect reset back to soul. So there's so many things to be said about that. But the main one is 
what is it for you that speaks to your soul? For me, it's singing. And I've always known that. And the way I know that is because when I was a child and before life got hard and before I thought I had to think about anything, singing was what I chose to do to just feel good. Like when I when I had a whole day laid out in front of me and nowhere that I had to be and nothing that I had to do, my number one choice was to sing. That was my number one choice. What was your number one choice? What was the thing that you would always choose to do when you were given the time? And you might have to cast your mind back to when you were much younger. It may, it may be that you haven't done that thing for years or it may be that you've really pushed it aside. I know for me, singing has really taken a back seat. There used to be a time where there would always be music on. I would always be singing, always singing in my car. I would always be singing around the house there has been an enormous chunk of time where that hasn't been the case. I just haven't wanted to. I didn't want to because it felt compromised. My voice wasn't mine and I didn't recognise it. And so everything ground to a halt. Can you see how this all ties in? I'm having this epiphany as you're listening to me. Can you tell? It's so amazing to me when we have these moments of realisation And it can be that simple. If you feel led to sing, you should just sing. If you feel led to write, you should just write. There's no formula. There's no formula. Stop looking around at everybody else. Stop buying a million courses and books and programs because you think you need to learn that thing to be a valuable human being. It isn't necessary. Just tune in to what you love and find a way to do that every day. Now, in my case, what I loved was no longer joyful for me because I felt compromised because my the instrument I was using wasn't working. It would be like if your thing was playing guitar, it would be like picking up a guitar and having three broken strings on it. It just wasn't working. Right. But then I allowed myself to be guided and I was guided to going back to having singing lessons. Singing lessons was something I always had from the age of 19 And for years and years and years, every single week, I would have a singing lesson. And I'd stopped doing that. So I think it's important to reconnect through the thing that you love and then allow yourself to be guided. If there's something you love, but there's something stopping you doing it, what is stopping you from doing it? If it's a fear that you don't do it well, then how can you learn to do it well? What's it going to take? And just start following yourself down that pathway what do I need to do in order to feel good about this again? Because this is actually my thing. The the amazing thing to me is every time I've tried to turn away from singing, the people in my life around me have always pulled me back to it. And that's been such a gift. As I've said before, we are always supported. We are always guided. There are angels on the earth that are around us and they look like your friends and your family and even your acquaintances that you meet online. I fully believe that. These are your guides. This is your cheerleading team, right? Their number one purpose in life is to ensure that you find yours, right? And any time you fall off the path, they will guide you back. But in our human state, it can feel like we'll tell ourselves that we're being misunderstood or we'll tell ourselves that they don't understand. When I tried to turn away from singing and become just a confidence coach, so i.e. just someone who coached and singing had nothing to do with it. Several of my friends said, but singing is your thing. And at the time I was like, oh, they don't get it. I'm just evolving. They don't understand. They're trying to pull me backwards. I don't want to go backwards. I can't sing anymore. I don't have a freaking voice. So what's the point? And there was a lot of anger about that and a lot of resentment. And so when the people around me tried to guide me back, I just would push against that and be like, no, you don't understand. I can't do that anymore. My voice doesn't work like that anymore. It's broken. And in telling my, in in acknowledging my voice was broken, what I was actually telling myself was I'm broken. And I would say it again and again and again, like an affirmation. And so I really felt in that moment, like it was the right thing to do. Now, here's the thing. It's always the right thing to do, right? You are never going to be guided wrong even when it feels wrong. So even when I was being guided away from singing, it was perfectly right. Why? Because as soon as I came away from it, I realised that that was not the right way, (laughs) 
<laughs> right? And then I came back. And at some point I went back to those people and was like, do you know what? You tried to tell me that singing is my thing. And it really is. But I had convinced myself that that couldn't be my thing because my voice had broken. Can you see how if we listen to our ego, to our fear-based thinking, rather than to our heart and soul, can you see how far wrong we can go? Can you see how far off path we can go? And I know, I know that sounds in contradiction to what I just said. My prayer is that we will always find our way back, but the truth is we don't always. I just think I, at some point, I made a conscious decision to find my connection again. I made the conscious decision to, to allow faith back into my life when it hadn't, it had been missing for a while. Now, I'm going to bring, I'm going to wrap this up shortly, but I want to tell you another reason why this is so perfect for today. After a week of feeling again, again, like, oh, do you know what? I found a, I found a journal today that was written a year ago and it could have been written today. And I, I read it and was just like, oh, you were stuck a year ago and you're still stuck now. What the hell is going on? And I really started to beat myself up about that. Of course, I don't believe that's true. I believe we're always moving forward. And of course, I reminded myself of that. But I just found it so weird that that was the journal. I've got so many journals in this house, hundreds. And yet that was the one I picked up this morning. And it fell open. It fell open actually on the 28th of May. And then I was like, holy shit, this is almost a year ago. I could just go back and find the 22nd. And so I did. And the, the entry from a whole year ago could have been written today. But the other thing I realised was the entry from a year ago led to my now, um, now one of my regular programmes, which is always available on my website, which was the Mindset Breakthrough Bootcamp. That period of struggle a year ago led to me writing this programme about breaking through with your mindset, because I turned it around and was like, how is this a lesson? And then what, how can I share this with the world? Um, that blew my mind a little bit that I'd found that a year on today. Here's what's really going to blow your mind, though. The best friend that I mentioned right at the top of the podcast who received her diagnosis right around all of this time kicking off was unfortunately my best friend who lost her life back in March. So we lost her on the 28th of March today would have been her 38th birthday. I just think, I just think, <laughs> and we've just passed triple one <laughs> on the podcast as well. Oh, do you know what? The day she left, I, I really felt her with me. I really felt her. And although I felt the sadness and I felt the loss, I really felt like she was with me and I feel like she's with me now and I just feel so guided and it just feels so perfect that all of this has come together today. Um, so I don't even feel like this podcast has been brought to you by me today. I feel like I'm dedicating this entire episode to Nunu, my best friend, one of my best friends, who um, who is now on, on the other side and is just soaring and I will forever treasure every single thing she gave me in life and every single thing she gives me now that she's passed on. So I guess if I want to sum this up, number one, if you are struggling right now, if you are second guessing yourself, if you're second guessing your gifts, if you don't know who you are, or if you're forgetting who you are, make that the priority. Please know this from me, you are not on your own you are never abandoned, even if it feels like it. That guidance that you so desperately seek is available to you. So take some time today to just be still, be quiet, to breathe, to reconnect to that, and then ask for the guidance and see what shows up for you. Be open to receiving what's coming in, that's crucial. Ask yourself, am I actually ready to receive 
this this guidance this message that's going to allow me to move forward and that sounds like a silly question but we do get attached to the struggle sometimes and so we're not always open to the guidance because if we're honest we don't actually want to move forward at this point it's the it's the same reason we feel like we want to throw ourselves in in our bed and put the covers over our head when we're having a bad day we just convince ourselves that that's what we need for that day We, we don't need anything else it may be true but it's never true forever it's never true for long. So find a way to reconnect today. Ask yourself, where does your joy reside? Where, where, does, where does your joy come from? What is it that you can do to bring yourself joy? And by the way, don't give me or, or yourself the, the popular expected answer, right? What I mean by that is so many people go, oh, like playing with my children brings me joy. It kind of does, but isn't it just really stressful as well? (laughs) Like don't give us the expected answer. Don't, don't fob yourself off with the answer you think you should be giving. I do this all the time, less so now, but when I first started journaling, I found I would always write the answers that I thought I should write just in case anybody ever found the journal. Have you ever done that? Um, So don't do that. Your journal is your sacred safe space. It's where you get to be honest. So where does your pure joy come from? Pure joy as in nothing else comes close. Nothing can derail you when you're doing that thing. It lights you up like nothing else. What is that for you? Find some time to do that today, to reconnect to it, to give gratitude for it and find a way to do that for yourself every single day and just keep going. I'll see you in the next episode. And here we go. It's time for a cheesy (laughs) sign-off. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to join me and my awesome community in our free Facebook group, Wake Up, Rise Up, go and check out the link in the show notes below. Don't forget, every Friday you can join me in that group for a live Q&A, and I also stream that on Instagram. All of the links you'll need are in the show notes for this episode. If you love the show, please go to iTunes, leave me a comment and a review and share with anyone you know who might love it too. And in the meantime, have an awesome day and keep shining. It's time.